Okay, so we're here at Whitelands College. Today, we're gonna to be doing some lab testing. We haven't really done any lab testing for probably about 18 months now, so it'll be really interesting to see how much things have changed since the last testing, how much I've progressed, and hopefully we'll see some good numbers. I know we're gonna see a lot of pain face in this. I'm really looking forward to it in a weird way. Um, yeah, so I'm nice and fresh now. Um, all I've done today so far is take Lola for an hour walk, so I should be feeling nice and fresh for some pain and some testing. of the testing was to just to get some baseline measurements for the upcoming training camp. We are now in Lanzarote and we have those results and we are going to be using those as a blueprint to guide us uh, for the next few weeks of our training. I'm going to start about 100 watts. I'm going to keep you there for about four minutes and we're going to increase it by 25 watts every four minutes okay. until we reach uh, four minimals so that's your lactate threshold point. Yeah. Once we get you there we will then get you just to spin out, rest, recover. During that time we'll take uh, gas as well okay. so look at oxygen and consumption and carbon dioxide output. In three, two, one, let's go. One, one, one. Was building on the lecture versus coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the scheme, the true stock trade walk is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one, one shot for the kill. The breeze cut freeze up, straight drop in the chills. I'm talking. So we are here doing a sub-maximal test looking for Lucy's lactate threshold, and we're doing a step test. Um, also looking at her substrate use throughout. Uh, we're taking blood samples every four minutes and incrementing the wattage every four minutes. And we have her rigged up, as you can see, to a metabolizer, I think it's called. And that is measuring the content of her breath, which then gets computed really cleverly through the machine and then displayed on the screen for us to analyse afterwards. I know that's just a warm up for the next one, so yeah, that was quite painful at the end, but wasn't actually too bad. Started off really nice and easy and then just started to bite a bit, so the next one is just gonna be all out hell, so I need some good tunes for that one. <laughs> And then we'll do a ramp test where you'll just look at maximum absorption. So as long as you can go, you just keep going and then we just terminate. Stretch and move to the 
in the lab we have the all-time highest recorded VO2 maxes since records began in 2010 for this lab and um, the highest ever recorded was by Richard Pointner with an insanely high VO2 max of 81.6. Um, Lucy's recorded today was, I'm not going to give you that information, but it's very high. <laughs> So it's always nice to have a good set of data that you can be 100% certain on. Um, that is why it is really good to have a sports lab actually test you and you've got all of the top equipment there. You can validate some of the findings that you've been seeing on your own power meters against extremely well calibrated equipment. That said, um, we tend to train a lot on fill and then we review afterwards um, the data. So, pretty much similar to the first test, but just a bit shorter. We started at slightly higher watts, and then every minute we added about 16 watts. Um, and the aim of the test is to literally just go until you can't push anymore. So, um, probably the hardest thing is just trying to keep up with the gears, because the resistance keeps coming on to make you push more watts. Um, but I think that was a PB for my VO2 max and heart rate actually on the bike. But I don't know actually the full data yet, but I feel like I worked pretty hard, so hopefully it's going to be good. Hey, it's amazing The subtle games that you are playing Heart rate response, we look at you know skin temperature response, we uh, rectal core temperature response, yeah. so how hot we're getting and those yeah. conditions. And then we look at like a loads of sexual measurements. So how are you just feeling sexually? Yeah. It's just some baseline measurements and then yeah, going from that we are kind of efficient. Kona. So it's a really short it's a really short flight over. <laughs> And right now, Lucy is doing a, a 40 minute session in Kona conditions using this environmental chamber. So it's up to around 32, 33 degrees and really high humidity to simulate the kind of climate that you might experience in Kona. And we're doing this to try and get an understanding of her um, thermal heat stress, um, rate of perceived exertion under those conditions. We're measuring her sweat rate and her core temperature. Um, it's February at the moment and we've done no heat work uh, whatsoever. It's been winter where we live in the UK and at the moment we are just getting a baseline test of Lucy's heat tolerance without any heat adaptation whatsoever and then the idea is throughout the season we will start to get more and more acclimated and hopefully this will be a baseline test and we shall see an improvement in her heat acclimation as the season progresses and we do more specific work in the heat. minutes in to the heat chamber at pretty much exact Tacona conditions. It's only February so I've never actually done this this early on. It's normally a lot easier than this when it comes to like August time. I'm now like soft pedaling at 100 watts. My heart rate is 150. So yeah, pretty brutal. The test that I did earlier I enjoyed a lot more so I think I'll just stick to them. <laughs> no, I know there's a lot of benefit to this so It'll be really cool to see later in the season how much better my tolerance is of the corona conditions and the heat. Because yeah, I feel pretty hot right now. Technically you are. <laughs> So the good thing is, 
is over eight months till Kona. So that can only get easier, right? Okay, so the results were very interesting. Um, it kind of proves what we've thought all along, and that is that Lucy is very, very good at burning the right fuel source for an Ironman. It would show that your swimming background as a 1500 meter swimmer um, and 800 meter swimmers tend to have very high VO2 maxes, and that's still within Lucy's background, he's still young, um, so yeah, extremely high VO2 max, but you know, VO2 max is kind of just a very small piece of the puzzle that we're looking at, especially for an Ironman, you don't really ever work anywhere near your VO2 max, so it's nice to have a, a really good one, but we're more interested in what's going on at the much lower end of the, uh, the scale with the right fuel sources, and that's where we're going to be focusing our training over the next few months. Okay, so that was today's lab testing. Um, a big thank you to Jodie Moss who let us come into the lab. Obviously did our lactate, our VO2, and then the pretty brutal heat stuff at the end as well. So yeah, a really good day all in all. I think we probably confirmed that I'm just a bit of a freak. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, really, really cool to see. And now we can hopefully build on that throughout the season as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, tune in again soon. So here we are at the University of Roehampton Sports Science Department and they have a really cool machine that measures the VO2 max of dogs. So we're going to put Lola on this bike and we're going to see what her VO2 max is. Go! Go Lola! Go on! So if you want to see our most recent video on race announcements then click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, then click here. And make sure to stay tuned for our next video where we are heading out to Lanzarote and giving you some more training updates.